And now, my people, my people, it's your guy, Kunle, a.k.a. the Ninja Englishman. And your boy, Kenebi, a.k.a. Mr. Gubo, Gubo, Gubo. And we got a special guest in the building. Akpos, Mr. Football and Pigeon, welcome to the show. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm good. My country people, I throw a salute to Hope see everywhere Palash. You don't know. I love mm. him. I love him. I love him. And welcome to another edition of Round on the Ground. <laughs> oh, yeah, now, Morocco. We finally done it, Africa. Finally, we've broken through the gateway of getting through that semi final. It was an eagerly anticipated game between Morocco and Portugal. The story before the game was, is Ronaldo going to play? Is it Ronaldo going to play? When the story should have been, are they going to be the first African nation to the semi-final? And I, I, I do believe a lot of people did doubt Morocco going into this game, but they shut up all the doubters. Comfortable 1-0 victory against Portugal. What are you guys telling me about that? What does that mean for Africa and our football? Well, Africa has made history. Africa has made a statement. And hopefully they're going to give us more slots in the next FIFA World Cup. I've heard it's nine next time. I've heard. Yeah, nine. What is good because um, Ghana and Nigeria should not be tussling over ah. who will qualify for World <laughs> hey. Cup. I don't want to see that happen again. <laughs> again. But Ooh. now we are here. Africa has made it to the semi finals. The Moroccans have made history. Kudos to the Moroccans. They've showed togetherness. They've shown a team spirit. They've shown a fighting willingness to overcome the odds. And they have only considered one goal in this tournament, which has been an own goal. They have beaten Belgium. They've beaten um, uh, uh, um, Portugal. They have beaten everybody in their way and they are here for a reason and nobody can call it a fluke because these guys, they have put in the work and they deserve everything that is coming to them. Congratulations to Morocco. Yeah, Akpo, so obviously going into this World Cup, people, when it came to the African nations, yeah. people were very much more focused on mm. the Senegalese or the, the you can never um, doubt the Cameroon Cameroonians, team. yeah. But um, what do you think has been the difference in this Morocco side? Why have they been able to reach the distance that they have in this World Cup? Well, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm always a team man. And I think like um, where we can see Morocco achieving this much so far and breaking the record that no African team has got to the semi-final is the fact that they have, been, they have put the team first. At the start of the World Cup, we saw what happened with the fact that we saw all the, let, let me talk this one in Pigeon, all the Katakata, all the Wala that happened with Akim Ziyech and the national team. Yeah. But when we saw that both, both parties were, were able to iron the differences, realize that at the end of the day, the team comes first. It's for us to put out our best players. Our people will say, you know, they go battle without you, you know, go with your best men. Mm -hmm. So Morocco realized they need to go to this World Cup with their best players, their superstars, the people who are willing to fight for the badge, fight for the nation. And they brought back Akim Ziyech. And everybody in that team is playing as a unit. And the good team, the beauty of it is the fact that um, I used to tell people, don't let this Morocco team score you first. They will frustrate you. Yeah. They will get under your skin. They yeah. are masters of the dark arts. Yeah. And it's not just a Morocco team. If you follow the African, um, not African countries, the way they play, Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, if they score you first, tomorrow you go sweat. It's real you talk. sweat and before you be able to equalize that goal. And we sat down and watched the game mm. together, and we literally watched it unravel. Just as Portugal were trying to get rhythm, Morocco would do something. You get kick the ball out, waste time, foul, whatever it took, you they know, made it you, happen. You know, every, every time a Moroccan player went down, they have this. I don't know how they do it. They have this. Um, this ability to stay down 30 minutes longer <laughs> like it kills your momentum For it kills sure. all the all the all the confidence you'll be building up and there was something the, um, one of the moroccan players did when pepe missed that chance mm -hmm. and i think that was 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 a big psychological one when pepe uh, missed the chance the guy kissed pepe's head <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. ah, he definitely small you, you, boy. You, you get it. It was like, ah, baba, not, nothing is going to happen today. Not today. <laughs> Don't worry. Not nah, today. Not be your time today. But can there be? Obviously, a lot of the headlines have kind of been dominated by the return of Hakim Ziyech. Mm. But if I had to ask you, who's been the most dominant Morocco player in this tournament so far? Would you say it was Ziyech or would you say I'll someone say else? I would say every 11 player. Mm, right? True. Every 11, every 11 man who's in that team. And um, the beauty about it is, guess what? They just signed this coach. They just got this coach three months in. Yeah. Akim Ziyech didn't go to the Nations Cup. Mm. He came back for the World Cup. You know, it's a very, very funny story because Morocco is not meant to be achieving this success right now Backs. because they were disorganized, turmoil, yeah. dismantled, and yeah, they are in the semi-finals of the World Cup. It kind of reminds me of Italy. In, it it kind of reminds me of Italy when they won the World Cup with Schilacci. There was a scandal going on, going on yeah, in Italian Paolo football. Rossi, you mean Paolo Rossi. Yeah, they also won it. West Kilachi also scored too. Now that was the 1990 World Cup. 
Africa. I think I missed that one. Yeah. I think that, that my bad. I missed <laughs> that right, one. Okay. But the, when they won it, when the Italians won it, they mm -hmm. had a scandal going yeah. on. It kind of reminds me of the Italians. And now you can see it. You can see unity. You can see a drive to make history. I don't know if they're going to go all the way, but so far it's like they already they've already won the World Cup in my eyes. A hundred percent. What they've achieved so far is more than anyone expected of this African nation, but African nations in general in the yeah. World Cup. And what I believe this can do is maybe open the doors and people start to respect our game because even though the likes of Nigeria were not and Ivory Coast were not this mm. World Cup, Egypt. I believe Egypt as well. I believe mm. the teams that came showed that African players are more than just pace and power. They get tactical news. There's other aspects to our game. And a, and a team like Morocco getting there through tactics to the semi-final is super, super impressive. But let's be honest, guys. They're there. The likes of Ziyech, Unahi. Uh, who's the guy that scored the winner oh, against Sawari, Portugal? Sawari, I think. Yeah, so these are players that are probably going to be on the transfer window or, mm. or talked about in Rumerville come January. But let's not forget the... the <laughs> The obstacle they have it at hand, they have to beat the world champions, France. Massive. Like going into this game, guys. Like, how? Where do you think this game is won or lost for either Morocco or France? Well, well, I, I would start with the fact that um, what the African countries and this World Cup has shown people that we no come cut can count the numbers of bridges there, or just to make up the numbers. We really want to partake in the footballing um, in the footballing sense. We are showing people that. Um, we are not pushovers, mm -hmm. and that's what Morocco are showing these European teams. And I think it's going to be a very hard nut for them to crack. But I love the confidence with, with the way the Morocco national team play. Mm. Akim Ziyech, um, um, Ashraf Akimi, sorry, has already sent a message to Kylian Mbappe. He said, see you, my friend. See mm. you soon. So I think that's going to be a fierce battle between Ashraf Akimi and Kylian Mbappe with the fact that both players, they understand their, they their self. They play together at, at, in PSG. So they've, they've faced, potentially faced each other in training sessions and all of that. So that, I think that's going to be a key battle. If Kylian Mbappe has a field day, has enough space to roam, I think it's going to put the Moroccan team to the sword. But if they keep him under lock and keys, I think it's going to be a difficult night for France. Do you agree with that, Paul? So do you have a different take? For me, it's a mental thing. At the end of the day, it's a mental mm. game. Football is a mental game. You might have all the skill, all the ability. If you do not have the bravery, the mindset, the will to win, you're going to lose. And for me, France, what I saw against England, England had they, had, they were the better team on the day. But France won because they had the experience, they had the will to win. Mm -hmm. Now, with this French team, they can win anyway. They play like Morocco too. They don't play pretty True football. That. They don't come to come and do tiki-taka. Yeah. They don't come to come and show you they will outscore you. Or go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah, Ooh. they come, they win, they go home. Now, it's going to be a clash of the dark arts for me. You have Morocco, you have France. And these are players that... Morocco players play in Europe. They, most of them play in the French mm -hmm. League too. Like Hakim, Hakim, Hakimi plays in the French League. So, what are we saying? It starts in the mind. Who is going to be brave enough? Who is going to be scared? Who is going to be nervous? Who is going to have the metal to step up on that plate, to take that penalty or take that free kick or to actually put that tackle in? For me, the French have the edge because they've been here before. They've done it before. Mm -hmm. And you look like Mbappe right now looks unplayable. So it's a mental game for me. I, I agree with you both. And, I, I, and, and to, to, talk, to wrap up this particular semi-final, what I would say is for France, what they showed against England is when they need to turn it on, they can turn mm. it on. And that's all they did. They turned it on in dribs and drabs. But this Morocco team, I won't lie to you guys, eh? they remind me of that Greek team that won the Euros. They didn't play the most um, exciting <laughs> football. They didn't have any particular star that lit up the World Cup, but they found a way to score and prevent the opposition from oh, scoring. Cool. And you said something very important yesterday when we were recording. You talked about how it hasn't been the teams that have played the expansive, mm. fluent football that we've seen progress here. It's been the teams that have just known what to do at the right moment. Yeah. And if Morocco, as you said, Aquas, if they have the ability to go 1-0 up, up. Wow. they go frustrate France. Yeah, and we saw that. You know, the funny thing is France played a similar team in Tunisia. Mm. And they lost to Tunisia. Although it was a B team, mm. but Tunisia <laughs> and Morocco are similar they, styles. They, they could also mirror the same thing. Mm. And it showed that these guys, these North African teams, they can frustrate people. True. And shout out to the African teams in this tournament because Tunisia beat France. Cameroon is the first African team to beat Brazil. Morocco is the first team now, African team to make it to the semi-finals. 
African teams they have really come to this tournament and they have really shown and they have really shown and proved and kudos to them. Mm. Yeah, Africa on the map. But it wasn't all celebrations when it came to the weekend. Obviously for Africa, a massive weekend getting the first African nation to the semi-finals. But someone was in tears. And I don't, like, I don't like to see a grown man in tears, and especially someone that's given so much to the game of football like Cristiano Ronaldo. Guys, obviously, we all, we all know on this panel that it's an end of an era. But do you think Ronaldo actually went into this World Cup with anything to prove? Well, I think he had something to prove. He had to prove that he's still the player he was, like he said on Pierce Morgan. At 37? Well, you know, let me tell you something. Those kind of players, you can't tell them that they're done. Because yeah. in their mind, they, they can do, they can go on forever. Mm. But at the end of the day, people are laughing at Ronaldo for crying, but he's a human being. And these guys, they have sacrificed their bodies, life, family. No matter, it's not about the money sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes to get to that point in your career and for him to lose to a team like Morocco, bowing out, that, that might be his last state. Last time last in, game for Portugal, bro. Yeah, and, last dance. and he never really had a chance to show that he could, you know, take this team to the next level. But I feel sad for him, but at the end of the day, what he has accomplished in football can never be rewritten or can ever be erased. So kudos to the guy. I feel sorry for him, but that's the game, man. You win, you lose at the end of the day, man. For sure. Aquas, if you're Ronaldo at this mm. moment, obviously with what you said in the interview, how, the, yeah. how your career's gone and the, the World Cup, what would you do now? Would you chill? Would you go and do this, the, the 200 million contract thing? Or are you still trying to uh, shop yourself around to all the top clubs in Europe and, and see how you go? What, what would you do? Well, firstly, for me, as a football fan and somebody who has followed, um, watched Cristiano Ronaldo, I think like um, I'm blessed to have watched Cristiano Ronaldo play football in this lifetime mm -hmm. um, because um, we had a lot of stories about the likes of Pele and other football greats. Yeah. But I think well, like Cristiano Ronaldo like yet uh, is up there with he's I think, yeah, the best, he's up yeah, the best I've seen play football. So it was difficult for me to see Ororo begin to cry like that. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know easy. So but big up, I want to big him up for what he has achieved so far. I think it's, it's, he's at a difficult stage in his career now. I think like um, Ian Wright said something about when it was for him at this at this point of his career where it seems like it became it's beginning to become the end of the era for him mm -hmm. he struggled i think that's at the junction where cristiano ronaldo is right now as in accepting the fact that um, my career is coming to an end and and the look if you've got multiple champions league yeah. multiple ballon d'ors you've won a, a national cup with your with yeah, your, your your country mm. Like, at the end of the day, you're 37. So, Ronaldo, I don't appreciate the press having to go at him in terms of they're expecting to be doing what a 28, 29 year old is doing just because it's Ronaldo. But what I do think is he needs to, in himself, just think, look, look at what I've done. I have nothing else to prove. Nothing if I else. retire today, nobody's going to tell me anything. And at but, the end of the but, day, but to be fair, I'll do that. If the press think a 28, we can do what a 28-year-old is his fault because he keeps on putting off phenomenal numbers. <laughs> so he, you can't blame. Punish you can't, your greatness. You can't right? blame yeah, the yeah. media, man. You, you made your bed, you lay on it, man. You you are what you eat at the end of the day, man. Mm -hmm. so, so, so can we say you have set a standard that's very high for even himself to replicate? Facts. That that that's it. That is it in a nutshell. He's fighting himself. Yeah. And to be honest. That's the reason that made Ronaldo the player he is and the reason he was able to give us these many years of greatness. So big up Cristiano Ronaldo and whatever you do next. Well, we all know that wasn't the only uh, news over the weekend. One goat was crying, while another one was raised up in the air in jubilation and everyone is talking about this is going to be his last dance, his World Cup. He's two years younger than Ronaldo. But he's setting the world alight still. Lionel Messi, a goal and assist against Holland. Even though it did go to extra times and penalties, and what a freaking crazy game it was. Guys, what can we expect from Argentina, Croatia, the second semi final? Well, we expect fight a fight. You know, they say when two elephants come together, the grass will suffer. Mm. So that's what's going to happen. The grass is going to suffer. This is probably going to be the biggest game in Messi's career so far. And it's all or nothing. It's, 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 it's either you stay at home or you don't, you don't come to play. So, but, sorry, but Croatia is a dangerous animal. It's a 
Dangerous animal. Croatia is an animal that doesn't know when to give up, doesn't know when to die. They show that against Brazil. They show that, look, you might play better than me, you might have better players than me, but I'm going to mess you up mm -hmm. at the end of the day because I am tactically superior. Yeah. And, that's, and, and I have a brilliant midfielder called Luka Modric. And so you're, you're spot on, and I think one of Croatia's biggest strengths is they don't respect anybody. No, they don't. Zero anybody. Fear. You can't be dominating us for 88 mm. minutes, so try and not score. <laughs> try and not score and let us take you to extra time. And Brazil found out the hard way. So even though we both know quality for quality, player for player, maybe Argentina just edge it. But can we really look at the game that way going into the semi-final? Like, uh, like you said, um, Argentina are going to be wary of not letting that game go, in, go into extra time and penalties because Petkovic has showed us what, what he could do, but also Emiliano Martinez has also showed us mm. what he could do. So I think if, if that game goes to penalties, it's going to be a very interesting one. I think it's going to be a clash of two goalkeepers who have really performed in terms of penalty shootouts right. and have history of keeping out penalties. So I think... I would personally, I want to see it go into extra time and penalties so that we'll get more actions out of football sure, fans. Sure. But I don't know if Argentine, Argentine fans would want that or, or um, Croatian fans. I think Croatian fans will want it more with the fact that 100%. they're very confident that if it goes to a penalty, they'll get the job But it'll be crazy though because if it goes to penalties, mm. you have two brilliant goalkeepers, goalkeepers. that can win against each other. But who, 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 are, who, who Argentina, between the two sides, which, which team do you think take be, takes better penalties? Argentina or Croatia? Well, well, it's not I, even I, about that, though. It's which, who has the better saver? But even at that, Croatia take good penalties. But I think mm. Argentina's penalties are very good. They're very good penalty takers. But Croatia, they have been there, they have done that. And that's what they're made of. So I think it's Croatia. Because yeah, I agree. And, and, and for me as well, it's one of the, Croatia one of the few teams that I know, even if they miss the first penalty, mm. they're not nervous. No. Because they've been through this thing over and over again. I think the last two World Cups, Every knockout game has gone to extra time. <laughs> because the, the, and they've won them all. Because they're not the keeper with Sivan. Yes, <laughs> now. <laughs> so for me, I believe this game is going to be kind of dictated like what we expected. So Argentina's game is find Messi, mm. then look, look to a space to run into. Mm. Whereas Croatia has, if Modric is ticking, the rest of the team is ticking. So we've got two Ballon d'Or winners against each other. It's definitely going to be the last dance for both of them, I do believe. Who is going to end up on top? Obviously, for me, I was following Netherlands. Go Messi knocked out Netherlands. Go back, go back. But I'm not a salty, bitter a supporter. Hey, 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 hey. I like fairy tale endings. I like fairy tale stories. The last dance of the go is en ended with the World Cup win. Mm. I mean, what better way to end your career than that? I don't know. Do you, do you, what, 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 do you, what do you guys think will happen if um, Lionel Messi eventually wins the World Cup? Do you think there will still be any debate between him and Cristiano Ronaldo? There will be no debate that? anymore. No, no, dead, dead. Not with him and Ronaldo. I think it even kind of mm. it'll even cancel or or give the Messi stands the confidence to say he's better than Maradona finally because he's car because let's be let's be honest he's carrying this team it's not on like back, yeah. he's just one of the pieces mm. he's carrying them on his on his back to this world cup at the age of 34 which is not, I, don't, I think that's more or less unheard of super impressive Zidane did the same though with France okay uh, but Zidane didn't get the dub at the yeah, end no. which is the only he thing that his, hurts he lost, me he lost, oh, he lost, lost his, his head but he went out like a I think G Zidane was 35 though yeah he went out and he went out like a G head boots well, that's for another show, I'm sure. But it will be nice to see. But Mbappe, uh -huh. the next Pele. Hey. <laughs> There's different conversations. Messi wins it. He's the GOAT. Uh, all conversations are very, very difficult for anyone else who has any other players. Mbappe wins. We have to start calling him the next Pele because he's moving the same way as Pele. And although he hasn't won the, the Champions League with PSG... Pele didn't win the Champions League yeah, either. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and two World Cups back to And Pele back. didn't win the Ballon d'Or either. So, boy. But do you, know, mean, do, do you know the argument a lot of people are talking about um, if Mbappe wins this next World Cup? Because I think I've been in, um, in discussions where people talk about this uh -huh, thing. Uh -huh. um, they're saying it has to... If he wins the next World Cup, definitely he gets in, into the conversation of being mentioned in um, the same bracket of the likes of Pele. But he has to do it consistently for a good period of time with respect to how Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo have done it for over a decade. Look, I, I agree. Do you, I don't know. If he does it, tell me how many footballers have back-to-back World Cup titles. No, but keeping it consistent. 
No, no, no. Yeah. But, no, no what do you mean keeping it consistent? One. He won a World Cup four years ago. Mm. Four years after, he wins one again. Mm. Look, I, come look, on. This is what mm. I would say to you: is he's allowed to be part of all conversations after that. Does, he, does it mean he wins the discussion? I'm saying maybe with those extra years will help yes. him. But he's part of every conversation after if he wins two World Cups for me. I don't fair, know. fair enough, fair enough. I don't know if you agree with that. What if Luka Modric wins it? Woo! Mm. Because he's won a Ballon d'Or during Ronaldo and Messi's years. Oh, guys, you're just taking me over my mouth. This is too much. It's too much. But obviously, this time next week, we would have crowned a new champion of the world, which is super, super exciting. But the other thing that we would have crowned, can it be, is who's going to win the Golden Boot? It's Mbappe versus Messi. So, let's see. So, those, those are the only two players that can realistically yeah, win it. Now, unless yeah. someone scores a hat-trick in the semi and does something crazy. Mm. But now, who's your money on? Messi or Mbappe to collect well, this, with Morocco, this um, Golden Boot? Morocco have the best defence. But I think Mbappe will get a goal in that game. I don't know. I just see so Mbappe. take his to I six. see Mbappe getting the goal in that game. Um, Personally, I, I would go with Mbappe because I, I still think, I strongly think that he might even win the Golden Boot with the, with the five goals he has scored already. Yeah, so yes. even no more additional goals. I think he's it's, a, win it's the I think boot. it's a possibility. Viewers, let us know. Do you think it's going to be Mbappe or Messi to win the Golden Boot, or will it be someone else? Will those same two players also win the Golden Ball, the Player of the Tournament? Let us know who's been your Player of the Tournament in the comment section. And I do believe it's fair to say on this panel. If we had to pick what our prediction is for the World Cup final, are we agreed it's going to be France versus Argentina? If we had to predict it, I'm not saying that's how football is going to treat okay. it, but if we had to predict it right now, who's going to be in that World Cup final? Um, I, I would want to go with what somebody has said, and it was called the madman. Samuel Eto. I want to see a Moroccan team. Go, I want to see an African team going to the final. So Morocco so I, versus. I, I know my, my 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 head says France, but my heart. I want to go with my heart as an African. I want to see Morocco in the final against against Argentina. Okay. Well, um, I don't know, man. I'm scared of Croatia, man. <laughs> and um, I think Croatia Croatia might beat Argentina, but I don't want I don't I don't want Messi to lose. Mm -hmm. So my head says Croatia. My heart says Argentina. So I, I think it might be Argentina France in the final. But if it's Argentina France in the final, man, that game, I can't call that game. Man. Ah, it's 50 50. Uh, that, that one is going to be a hard not to crack. Intense. For me, I want Morocco Croatia final. That's what the final I want. I know a lot of viewers want that final, but it's about reality. And I can't see past the fairy tale story ending for Messi with a final. So Argentina versus France, and it's going to be one hell of a game. But I'm looking forward to both semi-finals, nevertheless. <laughs> oh yeah, now, my people, my people, what a World Cup it's been, and we're finally at the final week. Shocks, surprises, new players announcing themselves, the first African nation in the semi-finals. But we are here. And that's another episode of Round on the Ground with your guy. Cool lady, a.k.a. the Niger Englishman. And your boy, Kanebi, a.k.a. Mr. Kobo, Kobo, Kobo. And on that guy, Akbo, say hello now, country people. Feel the heat. See you next week. Mm -hmm.